is power. And this is Powerful Stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with the Weekend Radio Team. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. Now, let's fire up the news hour. Here is the Weekend Radio Team. Hello, welcome to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour. This is uh, Kurt Dukac filling in today for Jennifer Solis. Uh, we have Beach, William Beach Baker to the right here. Welcome back. And of course, Perry Haichu. So, and we're going to bring you what's going on today in the news. So, well, it's been a busy week in the cannabis. Like last week, we had AGE, the American Glass Expo here in town over at the Hard Rock. Um, I went over there one of the days, checked it out. They moved it into the Hard Rock this uh, this year from the Alexis Park. Uh, it was a little bit of a different show. A lot more vendors. Lots much stricter than age, uh, Alexis mm-hmm. Park is. <laughs> what do you mean by stricter? Well, you know, they didn't even allow vape pens. They saw you with a really? vape pen. Kind of the same thing that's going on at Champs right now. Well, right. If no vape pens, no nothing. You know, they want to they wanna keep it all you know super professional you know but you got to understand that at a lot of these events like uh champs today is eight hours long it goes till it goes till 7 p.m tonight and they extended the hours by an extra hour so you got people that are working there for eight hours straight and then loading in and loading out and right stuff. you know a lot of these people who work at these pl- things are patients yeah you know absolutely I mean? and they, they they need they need to break or somewhere they can go to medicate mm. you know so yeah um and the vape pens are about as neutral as you can get. Look, you, you know, know. Yeah, and they're I've not offensive. I've been that drum for years yeah. about how I wish they would pick a more yeah. cannabis-friendly venue for these events and things like that. But really, the event has grown so large, they're left with very few choices, and we're yeah, kind of left too. with what they have. I mean, it's a great location. The convention center is what it is for a reason, and we're just going to have to attempt to try to work around it and hopefully get some of these laws or at least policies changed to, so like you said, get a medicating area or... Or something like that. And, you know, that, these aren't the only things going on in the cannabis world. Um, the High Times Cannabis Cup was last weekend, and it got yep. the last day got rained out, I heard. Yeah, Sunday, wow. Sunday, Sunday that got rained out. They actually <laughs> opened a very small little area, and they opened it way late. Um, anybody who had a one-day pass and was not able to use it last weekend, they're, they're honoring the one-day passes this next weekend because they're having it again this weekend. Mm-hmm. They planned it two weekends in a row. And if you had a two-day pass... You had to contact them by email to get the another day next weekend if you didn't already have passes. So, hmm. yeah, so. interesting. Only yeah, in like, California, right? <laughs> I yeah, they're willing to go to that, and I'm kind of glad I skipped out on yeah. it because of that. And now it's, you're telling me, oh, well, they're going to honor those other tickets this weekend. Well, that means the lines are going to be even longer. And I remember right. standing in line to go to that a couple of years ago, and it took me a good hour just to get get in the door when I already had my tickets. Yeah, on Super Bowl weekend. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's, Jesus. yeah, that's yeah. another thing. It's Super Bowl weekend. Every, I think a few people have forgot about that. I got, I actually got a bunch of invitations from right. the Democratic Party on, on Meetup uh, about some uh, mock caucuses and stuff like that going on, yeah. and they're inviting me to them, and I'm like, hmm, maybe I can do this, or I can watch the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, exactly. Wait, I, yeah. yeah, I think a lot of people did forget about it. <laughs> So, it's yeah. not what the league wants to hear. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Democrats. You know, but I, I the Super Bowl beat you out on that one. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, we got Denver back in the Super Bowl. So yeah, well, speaking of, who do you got? Uh, well, you know, I'm I'm kind of on the fence this one. Neither of these teams are really any of my teams, but I really, you know, Same. I I'd like to see Denver win, but the way Carolina has been playing. It's hard to say. Uh, just it, they've been they've been devouring some teams, you know. So hmm. it's, I would it's going to be lean, a good game. I'd have to lean really close to what you're saying for sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, Peyton Manning is notoriously bad in the playoffs. He's mm-hmm. kind of shown up. I think a lot of people would like to see him kind of go out on top. But what I would like to not see happen is him win the Super Bowl and say, "Oh, I think I'm going to try to stick around another year or <laughs> something like that." Like, you know, just. Take your take your win and walk if if he's so blessed to get it. But yeah, like you said, that's really jumping ahead. I think uh, Cam Newton and the, and the Panthers are very uh, I don't want to say unstoppable, but you know they, they look damn near unstoppable during the season. I mean, you you saw them; they were predicted to go undefeated and things like that. And they, I think they just ended up running out of gas. Well, I was hoping Denver would win just so that we could change the name of the Super Bowl to the Cannabis Cup. 
<laughs> you know, or something. Well, like we had that, we had the cannabis know. cup that very first year that yeah. both Colorado and, and Washington, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. that was. Great. <laughs> I was kind of hoping it would go like that. Somehow yeah, and this we, year. we had we had a shot at it again this year. Yeah, you know? we did. So yeah, and what what else? Uh, this week we uh we had the Source Grand opening on Sunday or that Saturday, and then Sunday they had the 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 patient information thing. So yeah, I was out there on Saturday. That was good a event. Lot busier than I thought it was going to be. There were yeah. a ton of ton of people that fuku burger truck that they had parked out there you know mm -hmm. whole parking lot was full it was yeah people circling the lot trying to find place to park you know and that's a that's a big shopping center so yeah it is. i was i was impressed yeah yeah and uh and then uh then uh sunday i didn't make it on sunday but they had a uh a uh, patient information center with uh, Dr. Trout there, and there were uh, a couple of members of the Scorpions can. Shout out to you guys. Good good uh, cannabis advocacy group uh, on uh, Nevada State College. Nevada State College. They went. They said it was a really good event. So, you know, you know, there's all sorts of great things happening right. in town now with these, these events, you know, mm -hmm. going on and new dispensaries open. What, we're at 11 dispensaries now? Is it 11 already? 11, wow. Yeah. And, and over 20... Uh, over 20 production and grow facilities at this time? Hmm. Um, there's only a, f well, I don't know how many are actually oh licensed and starting to grow right now. We, I think we have four different production places actually producing me medicine right now. Let's see. Uh, in, in Southern Nevada, I think there's one or two in Northern Nevada. I think. Right. Uh, yeah, it's hard to say yeah. because they're not exactly at harvest yet, mm. but they're all getting close. So it, those things are gonna start opening up and uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna see a lot of uh, cultivation and uh, I mean, one of them alone, they did a thing on it just a few days ago on the news. Yeah. Uh, 3,000 plants. Uh, Channel yeah, this is yesterday. the story I have right here. This yeah. is that, uh, I'll kind of, I guess I'll jump into it since yeah, we go, just kind of led mm -hmm. into it, you know, yeah. uh, a roundabout way. Um, this is straight from 8 News Now. And that says, you know, Nevada's medical marijuana business is picking up rapidly. Clark County now has 10 dispensaries and more than 20 cultivation and production facilities. Uh, 8 News now got an exclusive look inside one of the newest local companies growing cannabis. Uh, let's see here. These, uh, the master grower, John Analora, says the plants are just a few weeks away from hitting the market. And they have more than 200 plants ready to roll. But like you said, at, when they get up to speed, they'll have more than 3,000 mm -hmm. at peak production. And they're... They're not far from that, you know, from right. ramping that up. They're 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 moving pretty quickly, according to what it says here. They're looking to hire ten new people in the, in the next few weeks, couple mm -hmm. months. You know, that's a lot of full time people to hire just for right. growing. They're really hoping to expand right. rather quickly. And I would imagine a lot of these other dispensaries that have these mm -hmm. these um, well, gifted I, growing yeah. licenses are up doing the they same. They didn't have any these tours, right? And I went on one of the tours with one of our group, our fellow. Uh, groups that we like to tour with and uh, I, I toured uh, a few dispensaries and I was amazed how many plants there are and how close they are to I mean there's gonna be thousands of them out there I hope it drives the price down That's well, my, for the it's patients a, you know it's it's supply and demand and yeah. as we saw the prices just recently were actually lower than most of the stuff you find on weed yeah maps in it the is impressive market. to see that um, that I've noticed them start to go up a little bit because we've had a few more dispensaries open and no extra grows. But as these other grows come online and are actually producing material and getting it tested mm -hmm. and past testing and out there, we should see the prices come back down. Right, right. Um, I did see uh, an ad to. Di uh, They're coming down rapidly. I've noticed, you know, when people give their specials away and things like that, I, it's just a matter of time. Maybe what six months? Well, I've been Before testing things. a few things out, and and I bought a, an ounce of shake. And um, I think it was uh, Ghost or something. I'm not sure which one I bought, but it was only 200 bucks. Yeah, and by the time you. I got my discounts, right, my senior discount and all the other discounts they gave you, I think I paid about 175, 165 dollars. You can't beat that. Yeah, I just uh, I just got a special today. Nevada Wellness Center. They're doing a blowout on the Tangerine Dream, which is 25.62 percent THC. <laughs> right. 250 an ounce or Thirty-eight dollars an eighth. That's you know, fantastic. Yes, yeah. it that's is. fantastic prices. That's lab tested, lab tested, delicious, yeah. safe quality medicine, right. state legal. <laughs> yeah, and what's interesting about that too is that when you go into these wow. places and you identify yourself, you're a patient, you're a senior citizen, you're a boomer like me, um, you're going to get other discounts on top of that. And if you be, get on, like uh, the source has, and you get on their little preferred mailing list, you'll build up points and more discounts. So um, that really does help. And really, I was surprised because I'm not a coupon kind of guy, but I got to admit, <laughs> I, um, 
bought a bunch of stuff last week, and I walked out of there with $68, paying $68 for over $100 worth of merchandise. Right. And, and it, uh, yeah. it, it is, the, the source has their loyalty program for yeah. every dollar you spend it goes, and then they're, they're releasing different things on there, and it's like for this many points you get this, you know, and you can trade in your points at any given time, kind of like the casino clubs right. have, you know. Yeah. You yeah. save and them up for something yeah. big or yeah. use them for, you know, a couple of pre-rolls for, you know, yeah. Whatnot, yeah. You know whatever you feel like. <laughs> I guess. Well, yeah, one thing that really impressed me was they, it wasn't just patience. They allowed the public to come in there and tour the place, too, and to see what it's oh, like. Oh, yeah. And I thought that was really good because I talked to a, quite a few senior citizens there that weren't patients, mm -hmm. but we're going to come back Sunday to see the doctor, to see, you know, what can I do? The, I think I, that's I'm a really cool idea. pain pills or whatever, right? Yep. And so I was really impressed with that, that they're opening up to the whole public. You know? Yeah, and that's, that's, a, that's another little known fact. Uh, they can give tours, uh, visitors tours at any of these places mm. and just about any of them if you say you're interested call them up and say you're interested or even just stop by you're interested mm. in becoming a patient they will give you a tour of their dispensary though you just have to go through with a member uh, an employee of the dispensary has to be with you at all times and you're not allowed to buy but they can show you all the product let you know hey if you're thinking about becoming a patient they can direct you in the right way send you to places like us or to you know whoever they have worked out with but they'll, they'll help you in getting your card and they'll let you go in and tour the facility before you actually become a patient if you want you mean marijuana doesn't actually make you stupid no, it doesn't. <laughs> you know, there was something in the news that we, we've always joked about that because we always knew it was true, right? Uh, but they were, they, over uh, in 2012, Duke University had a study, and, and they insisted and persisted that heavy marijuana use for adolescents and young adults uh, w was associated with the decline in the IQ. Now, a lot of other researchers have thought, this doesn't make sense because most of us have tried pot and we haven't lost our IQ yet. <laughs> and, um, you know, Shakespeare and the rest of them, you know, are included in that class. So other researchers have recently done another study and criticized that study with a follow-up study. And what they did was they compared uh, 2,235 British teenagers and in a group of American twins. And when you have sm twins, <laughs> identical twins, that one smokes and one doesn't in the American study, all the results ended up coming out the same. Whether you smoke pot or not, it didn't affect their IQ. But what they found out in the bottom, and the bottom line was, you might be more predisposed to smoke pot if you had a poor intelligence to begin with than you would actually lower your intelligence huh. or your IQ just because you smoke pot. So, well, I've, I've, <laughs> I've read a few <laughs> other studies on this and basically what what the thing is it doesn't affect your long-term iq and your memory it might cloud what recently happened yeah, yeah. <laughs> what you don't really need to remember oh, of you course know, right yeah you I might mean, you might forget a little bit of the last remember, hour yeah remember all that <laughs> stuff we learned in school that we don't need anymore yeah you know okay and, and that's a that's another thing that's you you your mind has to be able to forget some things mm. because otherwise We'd, we'd run into a point where we can't remember anymore because our minds are full. <laughs> That's a true study, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it's just as important to be able to forget memories as it is to remember memories. Right. That's so. true. That's true. You know, uh, it, another study just came out. You, this is funny. Uh, US, uh, U.S. legal adult marijuana use just last year alone, in one year, grew 184%. No. Read it for yourself. Isn't that amazing? 184% increase because now what's happening, and, and this is what I keep saying, is that the people are coming out of the closet. And they're, the and they're purchasing, and they actually have sales now that they can say, we went from $5 to $10, you know, or that we have more customers coming through the door. And so, it, you know, Revenue people are keeps coming. going up and up. Yeah, it's just, it's just amazing. Um, mm. Parts of the growth is attributed to America, America's uh, quickly changing attitudes towards pot. In 2005, only 36% of Americans supported the legalization, and now 58%. And, this, mm -hmm. and we know it's more than that. We know it's more than 58%. That's only the people answering the survey. Right. Okay? So uh, they know it's overwhelming. It's a snowball. Uh, Colorado was the first state to take the plunge and reaped $135 million in cannabis taxes increasing from 2015, a 77% increase over to 2014. 
And I remember last year we were talking about this on the radio show here, that uh, Colorado was worried they're going to lose money or they weren't going to make as much as they thought they were going to make and all that kind of stuff. Well, you know what? That's a bunch of crap. Yeah, maybe the hype was going to taper off or something yeah, like that, no, but it yeah. just keeps it just keeps going. Yeah. Going. So and and really, other than the edible issue and stuff like that, uh, how much the dose and all that, uh, it's been pretty good and it's been pretty safe. You know. Yeah, I was. Uh, I just got done watching uh, the high profits on CNN again about the uh, BCC, the Breckenridge Cannabis mm -hmm. Club, mm. and uh, they uh, they were showing how much money they made in the first ski season there mm. and that they, <laughs> that they uh they made a, it was like a hundred and uh fourteen thousand dollars in taxes alone in the first month and they had to go give them that money and of course you're not allowed to cannabis bank so they had hundred and fourteen thousand dollars in cash that they had to take the council to pay them for their taxes for mm -hmm. the month and it scared the living daylights yeah, out of them. They're like, are, are you kidding me? Is this for real? Is this yeah. for real? Because just them holding that much money freaked them out. Yeah. But yet, it's okay for it to be forced upon the cannabis business. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, there's no banking out there. Yeah. So, you know, it was, it was, it was quite eye-opening, you know, that's like, hey, they want the money, but, you know, how are we supposed to pay you that money otherwise, other way, in any other, other way than cash? We can't mm -hmm. put it in the bank and draw a certified check for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, you're getting the cash. Uh, you know, there was a lot of fluff about that about a year ago. Oh, you know, Congress is getting these uh, regulations together, and uh, there are these memos going out to these financial institutions, and this and this and that, and we're going to work through this, and it's we're, we're we're close on this, and then all of a sudden, crickets. Never heard another word about it, and we're just kind of right back to square one with it, and you haven't heard any. Mm. Haven't heard anything about it. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard. You know, I myself have heard a ton of solutions, and nothing seems to be able to be worked uh, out. You know, it's 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 kind of it's kind of disrupting. But you know, the the dispensaries out here are doing really really well. Uh, let's see, we got another event coming up this weekend out in Pahrump. So you know, we do have a weekend chapter out in Pahrump. Right. You know, Dennis and Althea mm -hmm. run that. Very good chapter. Doing a very good job. Uh, the, the last meeting out there last month, uh, Jen went out to it, and she, there was like 17 patients there. It's <laughs> amazing. You know, which is, is quite a nice turnout, considering we just recently started that. Absolutely. But um, this Saturday, out at the Grove Dispensary out there, which if you remember about seven, eight months ago, we went out there and helped them with a grand opening kind of thing to show everyone that they're coming to town. Uh, they are, uh, they're having a uh, get-your-card thing out there so you can go out there and karma holistic is going to be out there and they're going to be giving discounts to people to get their medical marijuana cards so very cool that is being held uh this saturday from 10 to 2 o'clock at the grove dispensary out there on 1541 east basin road so if you're out in pahrump listening to us and you've been wondering how you're going to get your card because there's not a lot of doctors out there there will be a doctor out at the grove on this saturday from 10 to 2. yeah and that'll get you over to hump yep in, in pahrump East Basin Road. So here, okay. I got another funny little story here. Uh, this one isn't local, but this is about uh, the victory is normal. Court orders ISU to stop censoring T-shirts supporting marijuana legalization. Yeah. Speaking so, of Iowa. Yeah. <laughs> so we love Iowa, don't we? Yeah. Iowa so, State University. Yeah, so basically they, they're upset that the uh, state university had banned the group's highly modified normal ISU T-shirts due to the messages they expressed. I don't know about you, but I've seen a lot of yeah. normal shirts, and it's basically the same thing. It's the normal logo, you right. know, maybe a couple of leaves on it and anything. Yeah. Nothing that's, you know, ver worth any censoring or anything like that. So, oh. the, the <laughs> so, but basically they were upset with the ISU being associated with the normal and the university's trademark office emblazed on the front of their new shirt was the CY, the Cardinal ISU mascot. So they didn't want normal yeah. and their mascot on the same mm. t-shirt. But what was funny about that was they actually approved it first, and then they, they, the the uh, the committee says, yeah, you can do this, and, they and then they, they they didn't realize it. They didn't look at the shirt really good, <laughs> and then they seen thousands of them all over the campus, <laughs> and scared the heck out of them. Yeah. So, 
You know, it's just another thing with the crazy things, the censorship. You know, out here in uh, out here in Las Vegas, they wanted to make it to where the dispensaries weren't going to be able to sell T-shirts and stuff mm. like that originally. Mm. You remember that? I remember that. Oh yeah, sure. just like uh, <laughs> well, seeing the uh, the food edible products and chatter and all that in our dispensaries, it, it, that blew my mind because they uh, really fought that hard. You know. Well, you know, they, they, they did pass that Fight stupid everything. law with the uh, 10, 10 milligram servings mm. and the 100 milligram package uh, that is really just, it's stupid. We've talked about yeah, it before. It they based it off of Colorado law, but that's the Colorado recreational law. Right. And Colorado medical doesn't matter. And I've already heard it. I've tried a lot of these edibles. Delicious. Not medicine for somebody who truly needs it. Yeah. It's just yeah. not strong enough. Yeah, when well, you have to isn't. break up the candy bar and it's got 21 little bricks in it, like no, a no, Hershey's. Not you even break it. Whole thing. I gotta eat the whole thing and sometimes a second one. And, <laughs> and, and you know, cool. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spend that kind of money and no. eat that much sugar just to get my medicine in. Yeah, forget about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, thirty some dollar candy bar. <laughs> yeah, the yeah the the gold bars at Nevada Pure are like thirty two dollars is about the average they sell them for. And we love and they Nevada Pure. They generally Pure, carry a about one hundred and thirty, one hundred and forty milligrams throughout the whole bar. Right. So, I mean, that's about what I need for my pain and my spasms, you know, and, and, right, exactly. and, and at that point, I'm not really even getting high. I'm just mm. stopping the pain and the spasms. You know, I might mm. get a little bit of a body buzz, but, right. you know, not so much of a, you know, high, euphoric, mm. laughing and giggling kind of feeling. Right. So, you know, it's, that's one thing that we really need to get fixed in this next session. I mean, mm. it's, it's kind of, it's disappointing because it's, truly not you want it to be about medicine well then we should be able to get the strength of the medicine that right. we need not right you know it'd be like me going to the doctor and a doctor saying well you know the, you know we're going to put you on lower tabs but they only come one milligram per tablet so you need to take 20 of them <laughs> really? <laughs> it's, oh, it don't make any sense they're not going to do that with with what they consider medicine then why would they do that with cannabis right you know <laughs> here well, I would like to see us maybe have a show sometime where we, you know, not necessarily get high on the air, but uh, where we've evaluated them at home or whatever, each, all these products, and said, look, uh, you know, how did it affect you? How did it taste? How did it, because it's a lot of money to go in there. Like, I bought, I, I really like the CBD tea that I bought at one place, and, and it didn't get me high, but I thought it worked pretty good. So it's kind of nice to know how this stuff works because it's costs an awful lot of money, the yes, candy bars, the tea, the whatever, especially the edible products. We are actually working And you just that. don't know <laughs> if you're only getting three or four cookies, is it worth $24 for three or four cookies? You know, it might be. So, you know, a lot of people some think might are still choosing to make their own because of that. Yeah, because because of the limitations. I mean, God love them. I, I, yeah. I, tried, I tried the Evergreen Organics macaroons this last week. Um, before the, even the source, where they had the non-medicated ones at the source opening, but I got the medicated ones. They were freaking delicious. But I'm like, I told them, I said, you need to at least double the strength on these, because me as a mm. patient, I ate the whole package of five macaroons. Not that I wanted to, but I was going for relief, and I, it just wasn't enough to give me my relief. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? Yeah. And it was a whole package. You know, That's and, and it's not it's not the it's not evergreen organics fault. It's the state. They've actually doubled the strength on those macaroons now. So they took it into my consideration. So now the macaroons are going to be about 14 milligrams each and you get five in a package compared to seven milligrams each and mm. five in a package. So. Yeah. One thing the state might want to consider is the the amount of what they legalize for patients is five ounces a month. Right. Okay. Which is an ounce and a quarter a week. That's a that's what a chronic. Uh, pain patient needs okay and if you figure out what that is how much they're smoking a day if they weren't smoking it was turned into food you they have to increase it it, it takes to, even, yeah it that's takes what, even more to make concentrates yeah and they have their own formula when you buy concentrates and when you buy edibles it's not just it's not a flat out thing like if i no. buy a gram of concentrate the formula doesn't weigh out to be a gram it's like one point eight seven or mm. some something like that you know uh i was talking to jason about it the other day and he he was telling me all about it but anyway that kind of uh, further complicates things with how m patients mm. are to get their medicine because now they have to sit there and figure it out whether right. rather than just kind of going in and buying it because mm -hmm. like it used to be oh my god it's so expensive we'll never be able to do this and this and that but now we're getting to the point to where people are going to start being able to max out because the prices are going to start 
leveling, leveling mm. out to that point, and this is going to become an issue. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but a couple months down the road, I'm, I'm sure you're going to start hearing about this. Yeah, especially when you add in the edibles, because how did they figure you're entitled to five ounces a month, mm. you know? There's, uh, like I said, they have, a, they just, they have a formula. There's a mathematical formula. Yeah. And, uh, Next time you go to the dispensary and you buy an edible, ask them, say, what does the math break down per cookie? How right. many grams am I getting or or losing for right. my two and a half ounces per two weeks? You you can buy you know. considerably more edibles, but it's also because the edibles aren't that strong. Right. right. That's it's really what I'm saying, is if you're not getting You know what I mean? It's like... The whole package is, you know, maybe equivalent to, a, you know, a half of a joint worth of medicine. Really, it's, yeah, it's, 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 you know, it's. I, I want to support every way I can. I, I support. Mm -hmm. I try. I buy pre rolls. I buy all the different strains. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's, it, it's hard for me to, to justify spending that kind of money on these edibles when they just aren't bringing the relief. Now, mm. granted, for a beginner or somebody who's got real minor things. They're they're probably just fine, but yeah. But you see, now you're talking I'm, recreational again. Most of the patients exactly that are buying it for medicinal use, once right. again. Well, <laughs> right now they're fa they're catering to patients, really, basically. Well, they're supposed they're to. They're supposed so they're, to be, yeah, but they're not allowed to. And they're really. trying to get some new patients, but they're. I understand that they're getting a lot of out of state people. They've got to be probably getting more criticism from the California people than us because uh, we're grateful to have what, whatever we got. But the California people are used to having a much more potent edible or joints or whatever. Well, um, California yeah. people just look at the numbers and they just will not be purchasing them. That's yeah. what that will be. They'll just be and like, and oh. that can hurt them. No. Because, yeah. okay, I was online just the other day on Facebook, and I, I mentioned it every time this argument comes up, this Corova Edibles company that I follow on Facebook. They keep pushing those, oh, you know, check out our black bars. You know, people love that stuff. I mm -hmm. love their 1,000 milligram black bars. You take one giant bite out of them, and yep. you will get as medicated as you need to be. <laughs> yeah, no I've had, doubt I've had about a lot of, it. I've had a lot of edibles oh, yeah. like that. And, oh, I've know. had brownies that I would be in the Burning Man line to exit, and it takes like four or five hours just to exit Burning Man. And I would eat barely one brownie I know, the, whole, the whole four or five hours you know mm -hmm. because it was like just a little bite that's all you need or when I go to Bob Marley's every every winter I would go to Bob Marley's at this time of year 15 years in a row I'd have one little cup of tea it'd take two hours to sip it going down the hill and I'd be buzzed for another two hours and it was just fantastic mm -hmm. so I mean come on you know we'll get there no. I think there's enough pressure coming from these business entities at this point and yeah. it's just, you know. Well, they can they can make more tax dollars off of this. Yeah, stuff they're going to have to. They're going to have and they're to, gonna figure to that flex out. eventually. Better, those are going to get better taxes and all that. Yeah, I, I can't wait for the first round of tax numbers to come out. I mean, we're still too yeah. young. Oh into this man, for, I don't have yeah. the numbers really hit, but I'm nervous yeah. to see them. I think they're going to be really low, and people are going to go. You see. Well, you know, it's mm. only, it, yeah, if they're low, so. if they're low, it's only because we've only had a couple of them open. I mean, think about it. We have eleven of them open out of forty-eight. That's not even a quarter. Oh my God! We don't even have a quarter of them <laughs> that are going to be in the Clark County area opened yet. So yeah. of course, I mean, you wow. can take that tax number that we have currently and multiply it by like, you know, five or six, and that's going to be a little more what it'll really be like. But as more of these places are opening, our numbers are going to just start to jump here mm -hmm. because now that people see they can get safe tested medicine, they're yeah. going to go out and get their cards. Yeah, but a lot of people don't even, like a lot of the shops I don't feel like even want to open. Just hanging on for rec because there's not yeah. enough patients out there. It's hard to get your card, hard to get it in time. If we cranked out a thousand, like even two, three, four thousand patients, new patients a month right now, it would still take all that time to get them on the program, mm -hmm. get them through, get them, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's this whole thing. I mean, I keep hearing it over and over. This is one of the number one complaints of the business owners, mm -hmm. not the patient community even, but the business owners, the dispensary owners. They need to get more people on the card program. We need to right. streamline that. Wow, that so we're hearing like, it from yeah. both sides at yeah. this point, from the patients and the businesses. So. Yeah. We'll see what happens. You know, we can only hope yeah. that the the ears who need to hear it hear it and, you know, and do and something the, with it. And we know we do have an edge on that. We have a lobbyist working on it already. Jen, Jennifer, you know, mm -hmm. our president sits on legislative for this. We'll be doing our legislative training on February 11th at the Clark County Library. That's next Thursday. It's coming up quick. Yeah, right. exactly. This class, uh, this this one here, we're doing it on Thursday Thursday night at the Clark County Library. It's on our Facebook. Uh, it starts at 6 p.m. We're going to be 
first thing, registering everybody to vote. Right. I mean, because if you're coming to an advocate workshop and you want to be an advocate, you can't be an advocate if you're not registered and you don't yeah. go out and vote. That's the very first step to being an advocate. Um, next, we're, next, we're going to be teaching you how to find your, your legislative you know, people, your, your assemblymen, your senators, everyone who represents you, and how to sign up for the Nellis listing for, well, we're going to be signing up for the cannabis bills, but any bills that you might be interested in. You know what I mean? If you're interested in gun control, you can sign up on Nellis for gun control, and they'll keep you, control, you, know, keep you up to date on any bills that come up on that. Um, and, and for those of you that don't know, Nellis is the Nevada State Legislative Bill Tracking Program that is free for, I think, the first 10 bills that you track. Yeah, as an and individual, you can track 10. Yeah, and you just go online. It's absolutely free, super easy. Just type in the keyword on their website, and all the bills relating to that keyword will pop up either assembly or senate and you just click on them and you'll follow them they'll send you email notices when it comes up in committee it's yep. it's a beautiful thing it really is yep. it makes our lives a lot easier yep. so if and that can be easily found at the nevada legislative website yes so whether you're looking up the senate or the legis or the house or whatever uh nellis will be right at the top of the page that's right okay? and they'll guide you through it it's not that hard yeah. but we'll be glad to help you come to the workshop uh one year from now the legislature opens mm -hmm. so we've got 12 months to prepare for this and we're going to get a lot of good things happening between now and then yeah we got 12 months and this is our second meeting of this and you know if if you want to be involved this is this is you know this is a good place to learn how to do it you know we get i get that question all the time how can i help how can i make a difference well right. the best advocate for you is going to be you so come on down and learn how to become an advocate you yeah. know there, there, there is no, there is no wrong, wrong way to be an advocate except for, don't yeah. vote. <laughs> you'd be, you'd be surprised how influential you could be just talking to a legislator. Uh, it's amazing because the truth is only a small number of people will approach them about a bill or about a, something that concerns them in the legislature. But when they do, it's, it has magnitude, you know. And if you're a re make sure you're a registered voter. It's always nice to be able to say that to them. Mm -hmm. And if you're talking to someone in your district, then you've mm -hmm. got even more plugs. Of course. But if they're sponsoring a bill and they want, they want input, good or bad. Mm -hmm. So even if you don't support us on some of these issues, we still want you to put the input in there. Because the truth is, then at the end, we'll arrive at the, at the truth and the right legislation. And that's really what's important. Because we've, we've ended up with some crappy stuff. And we don't want crappy stuff. We want to fix the law. And we're going to do it right. And if you participate, I'll tell you what, it'll make the a big difference. The more capable, educated advocates we have out there, the better off we're going to be. Yes, how absolutely. You can, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. You know, we all want cannabis to be legalized, and we all want, we all have similar goals, but if we come across to these professionals the wrong way, it hurts the cause mm. more than it helps them. So it's very, very important that we, it's not about getting on the same page, it's just about teaching you to tell them more what they want to hear or not what they want to hear but how they want to hear it yeah it's a, they, they speak a little bit of a different language yeah, I, do. I always I always get reminded you know there's it's, you can do just as much harm if you don't know what you're doing as you can do good Absolutely. I remember one time I was up in Carson City and I was watching they, they teleconference down to Las Vegas in conference you know when they do their stuff in Carson and they had the teleconference on and there was all sorts of great points made and one of the last people down here in Las Vegas gets up there and the, and he says his name and everything and he's like I love weed woo <laughs> Erased okay, all, let's everything. bust him off. It, yeah, you, know, it, you basically, <laughs> that guy basically took all the good stuff that happened in the last hour and, and overshadowed yeah. it with his stupid comment and remark. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a time and a place for everything. And you don't, if you want to try to make difference in this industry, you don't go up there and act like an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You go up there and you speak their language, you know, and that's what, that's what we'll be teaching you to do on Thursday next week mm. so everybody come on out to that it's at the clark county library on uh east flamingo road so so looking forward to seeing you all very very good it's gonna be a fun event so i think we're ready for a break so all, all right, right. Yep. we'll be right back you're listening to the weekend 702 nevada cannabis news hour now here again the weekend radio team hey welcome back this is the nevada cannabis news hour so i'd like to take a second here and 
uh, thank a couple of our sponsors that helped make this show possible. Uh, we got Nevada Pure over on Boulder Highway. So uh, carrying Moxie concentrates. So if you're into the concentrates, man, these Moxie ones, just off the hook. Uh, so go on in and let them know we can sent you. And then uh, in your fine cannabis dispensaries over on 2520 South Maryland, number two. Mm-hmm. And they're running some good specials over there all the time. Keep an eye on their websites. They're, they're always running specials over there. Yeah. So, And also at Nevada Pure, uh, if you're a senior citizen or a discount, make sure you let them know. 15% off all wow. the time yeah. for senior citizens. I think that's discount. the biggest discount out there. Most of them are just 10%. Yeah, a lot of 10s. Oh, and also we have a little special thing for... For our weekend members and listeners out there, this Sunday, if you go into uh, Sunday, 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 Sunday special, Super Bowl, Sunday, Sunday special at uh, Euphoria Wellness. Go in there and mention we can. You get twenty percent off this, one night only. This Sunday oh. only. So <laughs> let them know that you're you're a member of we can and you support we can and twenty yeah. percent off this Sunday at Euphoria Wellness. Twenty percent. That's a lot. That's, yeah, that's really a, that's a pretty, lot. Pretty, <laughs> but then you might, you might miss catch me in there for that one. Go during halftime. <laughs> no, <laughs> Super Bowl. Pre Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, that crazy but four hour long pre show. Yeah, yeah. Stopping at twenty percent off. You can twenty yeah. percent off, you can get enough to fill that Super Bowl. Yeah, really. <laughs> Did anyone watch the Pro Bowl one person? Really? No, no, you know, I didn't. I, I didn't watch it a lot before and now that they've kind of redone it where they pick the teams kind of like school lot theory and you know <laughs> I like the fact that they practice together ahead of time now, but you know it's just kinda of like now that's not even NFC versus AFC, it's Irvin versus Rice kind of just lost me a little bit more. And then they don't even get to go to Hawaii anymore. Hmm. No. Yeah, that's no. right. So. Everybody <laughs> loved Hawaii. I liked it the way yeah, it was. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, hey, we didn't make it to the, you know, we didn't make it to the Super Bowl, but at least we get to go to Hawaii, you know? I think the owners were pissed because it wasn't at a an owner-owned stadium. It wasn't a real NFL stadium. Yeah, you know, just, they're like, it's in Hawaii. They're like, you know, we got to move it to a, a franchise owner's house or something like we gotta that. We got to switch it around so that we make the money, you know? That's nonsense. That's okay. <laughs> so I'm, just, I'm just jabbing a little bit. Sorry. <laughs> well, speaking of Florida, since the Pro Bowl was in Florida, I got a story out of there. Mm-hmm. Um, it appears that, once again, medical marijuana will be on the ballot this coming November, which is when it should have been in the first place, in my opinion. Right. Uh, you know, it's a presidential election year. It makes sense. It's, it's logical. It must have cost them millions to do it all over again, but... I'm just happy that they, they're getting another crack at it. Hopefully the language is a little bit more friendly. Um, I'm really anxious to see what they can do. They, they damn near got it last time. I mean, they won, but they didn't win. What I mean by that is I remember Florida got a higher percentage yeah. of yes votes than the other two municipalities that actually passed it. But because of the way their law was written, it had to be 60%. So, like, they won, but they didn't win. So, you know, yeah, we'll see, got, we'll see yeah, if they get it. Yeah. They can push, push over the top this time. They were, like, 2% short or something. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, in, in November, MPP had a pretty good little article about all the different legislative things. And uh, I picked up on this. In November, at least five states are expected to have initiatives on the ballot to regulate marijuana similar mm-hmm. to alcohol. Arizona, California, Maine, Massachusetts, and Nevada. Nevada. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be on the ballot. Now, um, my wow. interest is in with the patients, okay, keeping the patients at the table. So uh, whether you're in favor of recreation or not, we hope you'll stay in favor of the patients. And we're trying to set a good example. And uh, if you're in favor of recreation, make sure you get out there and register to vote and go out there and vote for it. Yeah. If you're against it, vote against I, I see well, this. you better vote for it because this article says that, you know, uh, everyone hoped that Obama maybe – uh, would use an executive action and kind of mm. deregulate it or or right. decriminalize or do, you know do something but you know he's pretty much indicated that it's not on his agenda for 2016 at least according to this this article here you know uh, what it be, what it's basically saying is marijuana advocates hoping for a substantial shift in federal marijuana policy are likely to be disappointed by president obama you know he says he's not here to reschedule it he says if you wanted me to change it pass a bill through Congress and I'll sign it. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. that's not, you know, yeah. uh, I'm not, I'm not holding my breath on that yeah. one. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. We had a saying in politics, beware of politicians bearing free gifts. That sounds a little bit like that there. <laughs> like, yeah, we'll do it, maybe. But uh, also, uh, the legislators, uh, a lot of the states have introduced, 13 states plus D.C. have introduced uh, pre-filled bills to l- regulate and legalize marijuana. Um, uh, there are um, 10 states that, that want to 
it, uh, stop the jail sentences and or slow them down or retire okay. them. Um, and there's a huge list of all these states doing yeah. it. Uh, states that have introduced uh, compensation benefits for medical patients. There's 11 states that are considering allowing us to use it as a prescription and maybe write off our taxes or do something like hmm. that. So, um, and it's all over the place. It's Florida, it's Arizona, it's Hawaii. I, I like it's that idea. Yeah, you, you don't incredible. necessarily are forcing the insurance companies to pay for it, but you can write it off it's a start. if you can prove the expense through a legal dispensary. Right. That's interesting. And if a doc writes a script, but we don't have state income tax here, so yeah, we don't have state you know, that income doesn't tax that doesn't matter to us. Yeah. Hmm. In California, that'd be something. Yeah, it would. Yeah, or any other state that has big oh. state taxes and stuff too, on top of it. Yeah. No doubt. You no. Know. So there you go. Huh. A little That's bright cool. news. Well, how about Utah? Uh, Dr. About Utah? Sue's at it again, Dr. Sue Sisley. Yeah. She's up there now trying to talk to Utah people, uh, having a little sense. And uh, actually, there's a lot of uh, Utah, I don't know what they call them, Utahians, <laughs> Utah citizens that are very much in favor of medical marijuana because their, their population Utonians. in Utah is aging rapidly. And boomers, uh, and I've said this, we've all tried it. You know, we all know it's harmless. And now that we're getting older, I mean, I'll tell you what, there's nothing worse than Oxycontin and, and the, uh, the drugs like that, uh, lower tabs and having to take all that crap. And um, I talk to pain doctors all the time and they're doing a 180 degree circle because medical marijuana is a great alternative for them, for a lot of their patients. Well, also, they're, they're, they can't prescribe the painkillers like they used to anymore. It's, it's, it's especially here in Nevada. Well, you see, we got, we got two articles right here that are kind of tying into this. Mm. On the one hand, we have members of Congress that are urging, uh, let's see, what, what, what do we got here? Here. Well, Let you can, take you can go with it. I pretty well know. Well, I guess congressional members are urging the VA to end its policy of prohibiting mm. physicians from recommending medical marijuana to qualifying patients in states where it's legal. Right. So, you know, that basically explains what they want to do right there. Right. And now, on the other hand, we say, does using marijuana jeopardize pain meds? Veteran says, he, veterans cannot be denied medical service just because they use marijuana, a right. VA spokesman says. But now we have these individual cases listed under here where they say, well, I have the exact opposite. You know, I have medical marijuana. They deny me my pain medication. And I remember having a, an, a conversation with a pharmacist from a certain Walgreens that I had suspected was denying medical marijuana patients pain meds through the pharmacy but it turned out it was something well a little different but yeah, still, there is a little know. something else going on there um, they're actually limiting how much pain meds they'll give to patients sometimes you'll go to a pharmacy and if you need laura tabs they'll of course you have to get it rewritten every month now yeah. they can't just yeah. give you an automatic and a lot of times they'll cut your cut your dosage in half or they'll say you only get 15 pills now you got to come back later and, and what they did was they bought everything out, CBS and Walgreens, they bought everything out in the pain meds area. Mm -hmm. and, and so now they're driving prices up and they're limiting people because the government's coming down on them. And they can actually look at a patient at a pharmacy now legally and say, you get it or you don't. So the government is you know, picking and choosing who gets their pain medication, but yet like they're limiting access to these narcotic pain medications, mm -hmm. but they're not allowing full access to medical marijuana either so no, you know you're restricting assets on both ends see what happens in politics is you have departments in the government that are run by department heads that are maybe appointed or they've been hired to do a job and we certainly know about that, that here in in, uh, in Nevada uh, and what happens is they they get all this control and they they have to interpret the regulations and they say, well, this is the way the regulation reads, and we'll do it this way. You got a story from Reno like that, uh, yeah. where uh, the newspaper up there, uh, uh, the Gazette, had to sue because they wanted to know who was on the list, uh, who was going to buy these dispensaries. Who right was, here, stories yeah. right here. I mean, and so uh, the, and they ended up winning that, didn't they? Yeah, they ended up finally winning that because you know, let's face it, you don't get total 
anonymity from all this stuff. Right. And, you know, you could have criminals involved in this crap. So, but the government is like that too. They have department heads and they run these things. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, a lot like that. There's a lot of criminals. You know, they run them right into the ground. I don't because understand how this federal argument works. They're like medical marijuana is illegal federally. How the hell is that possible when the mar when the federal government is currently today operating a medical marijuana program? The problem is it's, right now. Okay, but the DEA is against it, but the VA is in favor of it. The right. AMA is in favor of it, but the uh, P the uh, PPOs are against it. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. It's like a, a giant bureaucracy out there, and they're not working on the same page because you can't really fire them. You know, the government employees. Right. You know. <laughs> No, you know they're driven by lobbyists and money, and we know a lot of the big yeah. money comes out against cannabis. Are the people that are afraid that the cannabis right. is going to put them out of business? The alcohol industry, the tobacco industry, the pharmaceutical industry. Those are those are our three biggest. That's biggest ridiculous. This is a capitalist are, country. Why don't you yeah. just buy in? Mm -hmm. That's, that's not the they insane. Start, they are starting you know. to. They are yeah, I, I know, but it's argument. like that's where you go with it. Oh, Why the hell would you shut down something that has so much revenue potential if you're so worried about your shareholders? Don't look at it as competition. End, look, at it as competition. End, look at it as a revenue stream, for Christ's sake. End, you, got, you, got big, you got big oil and that afraid of it because, you know, the hemp biofuels. You got, same thing. You got same DuPont thing. against it, hemp, because, it, you know, because mm -hmm. it can be used for plastics and right. everything else. You know, you got the, you got the, you got the logging industry and big lumber yeah. against it, you know, because why, why would we need to cut down trees when we can use hemp and it regenerates every year and just harvest our hemp every so year. So why mm -hmm. be so short-sighted and say, well, it's obvious that there's a lot of, you know, uh, war drumming against these things. You know, there's a lot of environmental concerns that are coming out with the, mm -hmm. you know, the, not even the organic food and the GMO movement, but, you know, anti-BPA plastics and da-da-da, you know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things moving in that way. Why not look to the future and say, well, it's obvious that people are going to look for these alternatives. Let's develop this. Mm. Instead of, let's shut this down. Mm. You know, I guess I'm not a, you know, that's why I'm not on the board of directors of one of these right. companies, though, when they are. Yeah. So, well, I sort know. of thought about it the other day, and I thought about, it's sort of like sports medicine. There was a time when doctors couldn't figure out how to make money off of exercise. And now, and when they finally figured out how to have sports medicine, call it something different, mm -hmm. it sort of reminded me like sow belly and bacon. When it was called sow belly, they couldn't give it away. But when they changed the name to bacon, everybody loved it. So uh, it, we may have to repackage a lot of this. Well, how long did it take for people to get no. used to eating lobster? Oh, God, yeah. You know, There's lobster was looked on as a trash, a trash right? food for okay. forever. You know, it took, what, 40, Bottom 50 feeder. years for them to introduce yeah. lobster and convince people that this is something good to eat and look at it now. But still, you know, we've been trying to repackage marijuana for a long time now. Mm. And, you know, I'm not exactly sure how we're going to be able to crack that crack that on a, mm. on a national level. But like I said, I would like to see that, that issue raised, and I'm not sure why it isn't raised more often, is that when people give the whole it's federally legal thing, well, the feds currently today operate a medical marijuana program. How right. the hell can you even claim that marijuana has They hold, they has hold no patents on benefit? THC. You well, know, it's they like have, how can you say it has no medical benefit or that you know the states have no right to do this when the federal government is doing this right now? I think there are three or four people mm. that are still alive that still get those monthly tins. Right. And they're just like, oh, well, that doesn't matter. It's like, how the hell, you know, how is this so you can have it one way and not the other? You know, it's right. it kind of spits in the face of the democratic process in my in my opinion, but that's neither here nor there, you know. Um, yeah. On a stranger note, uh, kind of out of left field here, we had the Iowa caucus yesterday, and on one end we had very surprising Ted Cruz win on one side, and not so surprisingly Hillary Clinton went on the other side, but I think the story of the day was how close Bernie got to winning. Yeah. I mean, he that was, good. was so close. I mean, literally a coin toss, I believe, determined – a few of the delegates issued mm. were in Nevada. I don't know if some people know this, but people in Nevada deal cards right. to determine who wins and the high card wins. And if right. it's the high card, the spade is the highest suit. And then it goes from there. So uh, I remember like the mayor of Goldfield, they both drew jacks and the spade beat the diamond. Right. So, you yeah, know, I remember these that one. Thi yeah, these things happen still today. And people are like, oh, the coin flip is bullshit. I'm like, I love that. 
even though Hillary won right. all the coin flips, that's that's how that's how she goes. Right. You know? but what's great about that uh, is I've been to conventions where we went 22 ballots because it was tied. And if you didn't have a coin or a card, I'm telling you, that's why I like the coin and the card. Yeah, it ends it. That's it. Call, that's yeah. enough. But know. still, it's like you know, Bernie has all this. You know, I'm not affiliated with any organized religion. I am going to legalize pot and this and that. And he, they said that he beat Hillary. Seventy percent of the under thirty-five vote went to her, or Good. excuse me, went to Bernie. Good. And you know, not that I that, don't like Hillary, but that Good. really, like, she's got to be crapping her pants right now because of that. And, and that's a big feather in the cap for the pro marijuana people mm. that are really looking to him as this beacon right. of. Uh, even if he doesn't end up winning, he's drawing so much attention mm, yeah. that his issues are going to mm. issues. I, I think a lot of a lot of him is not necessarily even just the pro cannabis end of him. No. I think I think what attracts a lot of people to him is his his anti establishment and government kind of views. Like he doesn't he doesn't want to bow down to lobbyists. He, you know, if mm. he had his way, he would get rid of lobbyists. Right. You know, I feel, and that to me that's. One of the, the biggest fails in our justice system is the lobbyist system. Mm, you know, it's like, hey, I've got money. I can throw at it and get this law changed to however I want. I'm just going to yep. I'm just going to buy the vote, basically, is what they mm. do. And and, you know, that's what we've been up against for how many years in the cannabis movement? You know, absolutely. We're Almost just talking now. about yeah. and people with very deep pockets that don't want to see cannabis come around. And they've been fighting against us. And. That's or they say they're on our side, and then they are not on our side. Yeah. You know, it's like hmm. secretly throw a bunch of money the other direction. Yeah, playing <laughs> both sides of the street. Yep. So, yeah, yeah we got about two minutes left. So um, announcements. Yeah, we got a couple yeah. announcements. Our our website, wecan seven hundred two dot org, um, up and running, guys. We've uh, spent a little bit of time redoing this. It's uh, looking really good. We got our membership on there. So if you want to join us and become a member, we have our membership page. You can sign up for a one-time payment or a recurring payment. And we got memberships down as low as $4.20 a month. So, <laughs> And that money goes to help out, right. help us help patients. patients. Yeah, yeah, we are a 100% volunteer organization. None of us take any salaries. We do this to help and to educate people and to, to send people the right way. So, you know, go on and become a member. If you don't want to become a member, you can just donate. We have a donate right. button also. On the 11th, one more time, our mm -hmm. legislative training session at the Clark County Library. Clark County Library on East Flamingo, the main library in the large conference hall. So and what that time is that again? 6 p.m. it starts at. So be coming there. out, learn how, to be a, learn how to be an advocate. We've got our uh, monthly patient support group this uh is at the Coffee, Bean, and Tea Leaf on Maryland. It's on Saturday the 13th at 2 p.m. This may be our very last one here at the Coffee, Bean, and Tea Leaf. So come on out. We may be moving to the, a different location. Yeah, very, very to a different soon. location We've been soon. there for many, many years. Yeah, we've been yeah. there many years. But we have another location right next to a dispensary who's going to be offering us some pretty good discounts and a really nice room that we don't have to, that we can reserve and not have a... a yeah. crowd there and so also our uh on the 16th of april we have our big 420 yeah party big 420 party catfish john gonna be headlining that Man, one so if you thought our halloween party was good this one's gonna blow it away yeah this you, one's I, we, we can't wait to show you what we got we got made up for you guys but anyway yeah good um, music good times you know thank you guys for tuning in again Thanks and in. we will see you next week same bad time same bad channel yeah <laughs> bye, -bye.